Hi, it's time to do Compulsive Task 4, a heat transfer task that you should solve in ComSol Multiphysics. There are two subtasks, 4.1 and 4.2, and for the first one, 4.1, this is a step-by-step -step instruction that takes you nearly all the way to the solution. You should show, uh, once you're done, you should show your results to a teaching assistant and get clearance before continuing with subtask 4.2. So let's take a closer look at the task. It's a rectangular pipe and due to symmetry we only need to model this upper part. There will be no heat transfer between here and here because of symmetry. So it's a pipe that's 5 by 5 centimeters, rectangular pipe. And the iron is 1 centimeter thick and the rock wall is 3 centimeter thick. And you have some data here for uh, the different temperatures and heat transfer coefficients. Note that the heat transfer coefficient on the inside is very high, 10,000 watts per square meter in Kelvin, and that is because we let in steam here, and you will essentially have water condensing on the inside, and then you get really, really high heat transfer coefficient. And at time zero, everything here is 20 degrees, and then we let on the steam that is 200 degrees, and we will study how temperature changes in this pipe. So let's look at the questions. Uh, the first question is, how long time does it approximately take for the maximum temperature in each material to reach steady state? Is that the same time takes for temperature profiles to stop changing? So that then follow some instructions on how you do that. And we will do that step by step. Uh, so you create something that you can probe the maximum uh, temperature with. Uh, you plot the temp temperature along two different lines, one vertical line and one line along the edge of the model section, from the inner corner out to the outer corner. And for 1b, in the final temperature profile along the vertical line, why are the slopes in the two materials different from each other? And for 1c, why are the shapes of the two temperature profiles above different? And finally for 1d, does your result change if you include radiation on the inner and outer surface in your model? So we start up comes on multiphysics. We choose three dimensional, click next, and then we choose the physics, and this is heat transfer. So we go into heat transfer and take heat transfer in solids. We're only going to do, do the material, the iron and the insulation. And let's choose this as time dependent because we want, want to see how things change with time. Okay, so we want to draw our geometry. I think the easiest way to do that is to left click there and take polygon and enter it as a table with the different points of that polygon. So let's start in 0, 0. Sorry, 0, 0. Uh, it should be 5 centimeters wide, so not the unit, SI unit. 0 0.05, still y equals 0. And um, the next point in the corner up there in the right corner, uh, that should be 0 0.06, right? Because you have the one centimeter thick, and this sh should be 0 0.01, one centimeter thick, uh, and minus 0 0.01, and 0 0.01. And let's click Build Selector to see what we get. Yeah, this looks good. Okay, let's. that was the iron part, and let's create uh, the insulation part, the rock wall part, so left click on this one is easiest and click duplicate. So then we have another polygon. Now note that this part down here is actually that line here and that line is common for both and what we should have here then on that side is something uh, way away there. So the x there should be 0 0.06 plus 3 centimeters, so 0 0.09, and the y should be 0 0.04, and the x there minus 0 0.04, and the y still 0 0.04, and let's build the C and zoom extends. Yes, this looks good. Okay, so we're done with that. Uh, let's create uh, a material here, or rather select the material open material browser. We wanted this lower part to be iron and that's actually built in. That fits nicely. 
so iron and you can either click up here or you can left click here and add the material to the model when you do that it takes everything here and we don't want that uh, this part is not iron so let's take that thing away just to show you that you can either choose a material or you can enter data in another way i will not enter uh, a new material for this part but actually enter the data we have and that we do in this model down here so let's look in this one here we have initial values 293 i think it's nicer to write 273.15 plus 20 uh, so 20 degrees celsius is the initial value we have heat transfer in solids here and it takes the thermal conductivity the density and the heat capacity from the material and that's fine for this part which is iron uh, but for this one we haven't defined the material so let's cr create another heat transfer in solids left click heat transfer in solids and for this one we take uh, use it defined instead so what did we have we had lambda as 0 0.036 density is 90 and heat capacity is 840 so heat capacity 840 density as 90 and the thermal conductivity uh, 0.036 if i remember correctly let's check that 0.036 90 and 840 that's fine okay uh, isotropic means that it's the same all over so it's a nice material which has the same thermal conductivity in all directions and that's fine for us okay so we need to add uh, some domain to this so that's this domain you can left click or you can click the plus so that's defined now now it's time to add the convective heat flux on each side so one was 15 and it was still 20 degrees celsius let's write that like that uh, okay left click on that one or click plus and we have selected that one and on the inside we need yet another convective heat flux and there we have 10,000 so 1 to 10 to the power 5 and that one should be 200 degrees like that and it should be this border there plus okay I think we're done so let's try things here uh, first do the mesh uh, finer build all and go to study and i will make a clever choice here uh, let's take a step of 10 seconds and let's take the final time as 900 seconds and click on compute and see what happens that worked nicely but we wanted to plot the maximum temperature in both materials and you can do that by going to definitions and then you left click and take a probe here domain probe and once you've done that you select what domain you want to have and i only want to have one domain so let's take away that one so this is the insulation and we don't want the average we want the maximum and take another one for the other material probe domain probe and the maximum and this time we want uh, that one but only this one down here okay let's click on compute again and when you do that when you click compute you actually get a new graph down here that's nice so this is our result so let's zoom in on that and see it apparently changes really really rapidly there uh, so that takes about 15 seconds to reach steady state for the maximum temperature but uh, is that the same thing as saying that the whole system is at steady state well let's look at a temperature profile through the material so go to results and choose a 1d plot group and there left click uh, to create a line graph and here you can select uh, a line and plot so what's this well these are temperature profiles for different times you might note the blue line here that's the our first time and that looks a bit strange 
and there are some numerical problems when you start this kind of simulation. So uh, this is actually not really true. But after a while, the solution gets more stable and you can trust the simulations more. So let's create uh, one vertical temperature for profile as well. 1D plot group and a line graph. And then instead of choosing uh, a boundary here, then you can click this one thing up here, define cut line. And what's really nice with that cut line is that it comes exactly where we want it. Oops. Yeah, you can actually change things here by doing like this. Uh, and that wasn't what we wanted. Let's delete this one and start over. So let's do plot. Okay, so let's uh, not plot all different times, but a few. And there seems to be a slight problem. You, you click here on 1D plot group and sometimes console doesn't seem to understand what you want to do. So if I take the first there and click plot, nothing seems to happen. So let's click down here and do the same thing. And then it seems to work. Uh, yeah, then you only get the first one. But the first one wasn't that interesting. So let's take from a list. And depending on what operating system you use, you use different keyboard buttons. On my Mac, I use the command button to click. So let's click on 10 and then command click on 70, 130, 340, 610, something like that. And see what we get. Plot. Let's uh, take the from list again and choose 700 and 650 and plot. Yeah, then you have essentially no difference. So note here that you have one slope here and another slope there. And you should figure out uh, why the slopes are different and what that means. In the other plot, I click there first, time selection, and then, sorry. And I get some different things. But the thing here is that I never get a straight line. And you should figure out why that is so. A hint is that it has something to do with the geometry. Okay, so we're done up to 41C and then it's just 41D, radiation. So how do you deal with that? Well, you go into the heat transfer in solids and you left click and you take surface to ambient radiation and you need two of those. One for the inside. And we need some kind of es emissivity, uh, a number between 0 and 1. And let's just pick something here. Let's pick 0 0.4. Uh, and so first ambient radiation on the inside. Let's try to take that from the material. The ambient temperature there is 200 degrees. And it's this thing here. And now if uh, our material doesn't have a, an emissivity defined, we will run into an error here. Yeah, uh, something went wrong. Variable material epsilon rad. So our material doesn't have an epsilon in there. So we can't do it like that. You need to take user defined there as well. So let's let's say that this is polished. Uh, so it's perhaps something like 0 0.7. I don't know. Just put in some uh, seemingly reasonable number there. Uh, and we can compute. So this looks really different. That's uh, strange. Uh, the temperature seems to be the same all over. And it's uh, approximately something like uh, 20 degrees or something. That's strange. Ah, but it says time zero up there. So let's uh, pick another time. This thing is so easy to do mistakes about uh, that time here might change and then you get something something that you're not familiar with. So what you should do uh, is to pick a certain time and you can pick a temperature here and see does that change if I turn surface to ambient radiation on or off. And you should think about why that is so. Uh, you can disable here to turn things off. So if you disable that and disable that, you don't need to delete these parts. And then you could uh, rerun. You, since we didn't change much, we can update the solution that might go faster. Uh, 
so you can check if things are different. Okay, that's it.